This is a file cabinet that I picked up for free. Someone was giving it away on Craigslist. I turned it into a planner box that waters itself automatically. And I did it with a $5 budget. Then for grins, I spent a bit more and built a fancier version. And if you watch till the end, I'll show you how I'm going to make an entire greenhouse water itself just like these planters do. But the way they water themselves is probably not what you think. It's from underneath. When you water a traditional planter, a lot of the water is lost to runoff. That same amount of water in a sub-irrigated planter is stored initially and then soaked back up into the soil where the roots of the plants can utilize it over time. In simple terms, this is how a sub-irrigated planter works. Now I'm sure that rational rhizome-rearing residents realize residing in ringing wet regions readily results in root rot. Relax. Reservoirs. An important feature of these planters is a reservoir at the bottom that both stores the water and also allows airflow to prevent root rot. These subterranean reservoirs pair with a bulkhead fitting that serves as an overflow. This overflow determines how much water is stored in the bottom of the planter. The most essential components to build one of these are a liner, a bulkhead fitting, and a subterranean reservoir. You can make your own reservoir for free out of used plastic bottles, and the other two pieces cost about $5 in the links below. The commission earned from links in the description grow this channel and help me keep making videos like this one. Now let's build a planter. The first step is to get your hands in a file cabinet. They usually cost about $20 online, but if you're patient you can often find someone giving one away for free. Some types of file cabinets don't have a floor underneath the bottom drawer. Because we are tipping ours on its back, the floor panel serves as a wall, so make sure you get a filing cabinet with a floor. Step one is to remove the drawers. If you have any ideas what these could be repurposed for, leave me some suggestions in the comments, because so far nothing comes to my mind. Once the drawers are out, it's worth the effort to figure out how to remove any pointy surfaces inside the filing cabinet. These planters work best with a waterproof liner in them, and because I am using a relatively thin sheet of plastic for this, you want to make sure there aren't any sharp edges that will tear up the liner and cause leaks. The sharp pieces will probably vary based on what type of file cabinet you have, but if you wouldn't want to stand on it with bare feet, it's probably too sharp to leave in. After you've gutted your filing cabinet, it's time to make some water reservoirs. In this budget build, I'm showing you how to use recycled bottles to make the reservoirs for free. It's a bit time consuming, but I told you it could be done for $5, so I'm going to do it. It's easiest to use identical bottles so they nest nicely inside each other. You want to make sure that the reservoirs will fill easily with rising water, otherwise they might start to float. That means you don't want the joints between the two bottles to seal water tight. When in doubt, drill some holes in the bottles to allow water to flood them. If the work of cutting and joining bottles together looks like more than you want to endure, keep watching. I show an easier way of doing this later in the video if you're willing to shell out a few extra bucks. Once it's apparent where the top of your water reservoir is going to sit, it's time to drill the hole for the bulkhead fitting. You want this hole to be right around the top of the reservoirs. This allows the maximum amount of water storage and airflow. You will need to remove the reservoirs anyway to install the liner, so you might as well do it now. To drill the hole for the bulkhead fitting, a step-up drill bit is the fastest method, link in description. Because any metal filings could puncture your plastic sheet in future steps, it's a good idea to take the time to remove any leftover metal filings that the step-up drill bit generated. Once your bulkhead hole is drilled, you should remove any burrs around the edge. This little device is called a deburring tool and it's made specifically for that purpose. It's a great little time saver. I'll put a link in the description for anyone interested. Now it's time to install the plastic liner. Remember this has to be one continuous sheet to avoid leaks. Thicker is always better. You can use magnets to temporarily hold the liner in place while you unfold it. If you cut the sheet at this stage, make sure you leave enough extra material to ensure there's some slack. Extra folds of material are not a problem here. If you cut it too small, that is a problem because when you add dirt it tends to pull the edges of the plastic downward, so leave lots of slack at this point. Now it's time to install the bulkhead fitting. Cut a hole in the plastic liner just big enough for the threaded part of the bulkhead to fit through. Push the sheet down to ensure it's snug against the floor, and then put the reservoirs back in place. Now to make sure the bottles don't get all their holes clogged with dirt, it's helpful to put a layer of fabric on top of them. Old t-shirts or towels or garden fabric work well for this. I assume pretty much anyone with an internet connection can get their hands in an old towel, so I didn't include this in the price. If you don't have any free cloth, you can probably skip this step. Now is a good time to put your planter where you want it to remain permanently because we are about to add dirt to this thing and it gets heavy real quick. The expression dirt cheap is not always that accurate in my experience. High-end compost costs 
the earth. Although that means something's expensive. Now I've confused myself. Anyway, the bottom line is this is supposed to be a $5 project. As I mentioned in my fence video, I have dug many soaking pits in my yard and I've saved the dirt from each pit. Now I get to put that dirt to use for free. It's a good idea to be gentle with how you put the dirt into the planter because you don't want to collapse the water reservoirs. Once you've filled the planter with dirt, it's time to trim the plastic sheet to the exact size you want it. Because this is a budget build, I'm holding the plastic to the file cabinet with tape. All right, the $5 planter is now complete. Now, before we make the fancy planter, I'd like you to ask yourself, do you know someone that kills everything they try to grow because they forget to water it? You don't have to tell them why you're doing it, but you know the right thing to do. Send them this video for their sake. Okay, now it's time to build the fancier planter. First thing I did was print out the steel flower that is my channel icon to make an actual steel flower. I wanted to use the same sheet of scrap steel that I used in a previous video to make my thumbs up icons. And speaking of the thumbs up, if you didn't click it already, I would appreciate you doing so now. It helps these videos reach a broader audience. You can think of it as a digital tip jar that doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me a ton, so thank you. I used my plasma cutter to get the rough outline of the flower. Then I welded some elongated nuts to the flower to act as fasteners. I made some detailed videos on how to plasma cut and weld a flower like this on my Patreon page. If you're interested in metal work, you should check out the Patreon link in the description. To make the flower look more three-dimensional, I wanted to have a reflective surface as a backing. I decided to use some of the aluminum flashing from my recent fence video. Watch that after this one. I had a couple rolls left over and I figured if I cut it to the right shape it would work perfectly. I used some neodymium magnets to mount the flashing to the flower. This meant I didn't have to drill any holes or weld any fancy brackets. It worked very nicely overall. Then I attached the steel flower to the file cabinet and started to build the actual guts of this fancy planter. I'll put a list of all the upgraded and slightly more expensive parts for this planter down in the description. I wanted to be able to move this planter around on my porch so I installed some casters. These casters actually wound up bending under the weight of the planter. I'll put a link to more robust casters in the description. I also wanted to use different material for the water reservoirs in this planter. I had some leftover drain pipe scraps from a previous project, but this stuff can be purchased at hardware stores for about $1.50 a foot. I'm using this because it's stronger than plastic bottles and it's less work as far as cutting. I'm also using this because it is going to double as a geothermal model that will demonstrate how I plan to build my self-heating greenhouse. That'll make more sense in a bit. The bulkhead fitting is exactly the same as the first planter. I used a thicker plastic drop cloth for this fancy planter. This stuff is 3 mil as opposed to the 0.7 mil used on the budget planter. I realized as I was putting dirt into the cheap planter that the sticks from the dirt pose the risk of puncturing the liner. Since this planter is going on the porch right next to my rocket mass heater, I didn't want any leaks. The cob bench will soak up water and become soft, so it was worth the $15 to get a thicker and stronger plastic liner for this planter. If you are putting one of these planters indoors and you can't afford the risk of any leaks, consider using a heavy duty tarp as a puncture shield. Then you can double that up with a pond liner. It all depends on how many rocks are in your soil and how devastating a leak would be for your application. These items will take you well over the $5 budget though. Now it's time for dirt and plants. I really do have giant piles of dirt, so I'm not gonna buy potting soil for this planter either. Just as before, I trim the plastic liner with scissors and use postal tape to hold the liner to the file cabinet. If one were so inclined, they could also use some neodymium magnets to help hold the liner in place, but I decided to save them for other uses. I used to have an awesome little mandarin orange tree, but it froze the same year I built my own water system. I'm going to try to grow one in this planter. I also have this plant called lemon myrtle that is delicious for teas and for cooking, but it dies and freezes, so that's going in the planter too. Then I planted an assortment of other edible herbal plants that were still available off-season. In order, these are chaya, aka tree spinach, lavender, rosemary, Texas tarragon, basil, chard, dragon fruit, and borage. And lastly, I added a nice thick layer of cedar mulch. This helps retain moisture, and it smells nice too. Now let me show you how it works, and even more importantly, let me show you how I plan to scale this concept up to an entire greenhouse. To water this planter, you simply pour water in from the top until it fills up the reservoirs at the bottom and starts spilling out of the bulkhead fitting. In the case of the planter on my porch, I connected it to a piece of tubing that runs outside to avoid making a mess on the floor. I added these little tubing chimneys only to serve as a model for my greenhouse. 
They do not assist the function of this planter, and normally you wouldn't need these at all. You would simply run horizontal segments of drain tube along the bottom that are the exact length of the file cabinet. Then you cover the ends with some cloth so dirt doesn't fill them. When you have young plants in this planter, it is important to keep in mind their roots need time to grow all the way down to the water reservoirs. This means that you will have to water more frequently initially, but once the plants are established and the roots have grown down to the water, you only have to water these about once per month. Eventually, all the water is absorbed out of the reservoirs and you are left with big air tubes running through the dirt. This is where I'm switching gears to use this planter as a demonstration for my upcoming greenhouse. For the greenhouse, these tubes will function as a geothermal heating system all winter long. All I have to do is not fill them with water. Let me show you what I mean. Under the greenhouse, I will bury a few long segments of pipe. On either end, there will be a sort of chimney. One of the chimneys will rise up to the roof of the greenhouse. This taller chimney is where air is sucked into the tube using a ventilation fan. On sunny winter days, this taller tube will pull hot air into the tube all day long. This heat energy soaks into the soil surrounding the tube. Then at night, when it's coldest, you can keep the fan running to continue pulling air through the tube. The heat energy that is stored inside the soil now heats the air inside the tube and in turn heats the greenhouse. It's a bit like having a giant rocket mass heater. You should watch that video if you haven't already. It's all about thermal mass and how it can be used to heat a living space. In the case of this greenhouse, the soil underneath the plants will act as the thermal mass. This will allow the greenhouse to essentially heat itself. And where, you ask, is this greenhouse going? Here. This greenhouse will be the grand finale of a porch renovation project I started a couple years ago. I plan on using old, and ideally, recycled culvert pipes. The joints between the culvert segments will leak enough to let water soak into the soil, but should be tight enough to keep the soil out of the tubes. Yes, that means water will percolate into the soil, but that's okay. The water I plan on putting into the greenhouse reservoir tubes will be excess runoff water from my rain garden in the front yard. Video on that coming soon. Have we drifted off topic from small planters? You bet we have, but aren't you excited? If you want to see me build this, subscribe and turn on alerts. If you want to see me fail in real time for the entire world to see, subscribe and turn on alerts, because it might just happen. That's it for this round, folks. I'll see you on the next one.